when the truck start? Start, right? And that's my point. So no matter what vehicle you have, we're going to use their power net test because it just ensures that we test the full system and it doesn't allow you to skip steps. It says, all right, now go back, right? So, it, so I'm going to go individual test, voltage drop test. Then it's asking me, all right, what do you want to volt drop, right? Do I want to do starting cables, charging cables, the magnetic circuit, you know, generic volt drop is a lift gate, you know, you know, so it'll let me voltage drop any type of system. The only reason what type of system it is matters is because the amount of amperage I'm going to pull through that wire changes, right? I would not want to pull uh, the same amount of voltage through a starter cable as I would a lift gate cable, right? So I wouldn't want to pull that same amount of amperage because real big cable, real little cable, the, the amperage value is going to be different. So it's telling me how to hook that up, right? It's saying, hey, put the big leads, you know, large leads to the starter, right? And it's got a pitcher, right? Mm -hmm. And it's saying put the small leads to the battery. I think a technician should be able to figure that out. It's got pictures, right? Um, <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm not at all saying anything negative about technicians. Obviously, that's where I got my start. But my, uh, my point in saying it that way is that we're trying to bridge the gap. <laughs> Make sure I put it up right. Uh, we're trying to bridge the gap between tech levels so you know what you get, right? So regardless of if you get a tech one or a tech eight, um, you get the same quality of uh, quality of it comes with all of these different test leads because, you know, obviously that is a automotive battery. You have a Group 31 battery, which would require you to screw these studs on there to get a good connection. Same thing here. You have these larger studs, uh, larger connectors for the starter, and then these are uh, these smaller adapters are for the alternator. So that way, no matter what part of the system you're working on, you can make sure that the connection is not telling you bad uh, because there have been some concerns about that. A bad connection is going to have voltage drop just like a bad cable would. So, uh, I'm going to put my small leads on. And it won't update, it won't let you leave that screen until it sees the right voltages. So you see it automatically went to the next screen. I hit start test. All right, so it says, that I have 830 millivolts of voltage drop on one side, 611 millivolts of voltage drop on the other side of the circuit. So it fails, right? Now, did the truck, would it, would the truck start? Start, right? And that's my point, is that you can run with bad cables and be replacing computers, starters, and alternators all day long because they're gonna see they're going to be affected by those negative cables because the only pathway for them to get voltage from the batteries is those same cables. So my only point is that your truck will start for many, many miles and then you'll put a starter on. Then your truck will start for many, many miles and then you'll put an alternator on. And, and then you'll need another starter. So that's, again, that first starter that you had from the factory probably lasted half a million miles. The next one only lasts 100. The next one only lasts 80. The next one, and my point is you never know that the cause is the cables because that is not part of old antiquated test procedures. But all of your new equipment is going to require that.